So last week we took, looked at a current transformer and it's pretty straightforward and how easy they are to use. Just run your uh, hot wire for your motor or whatever you're going to sense through the center of this and then get a low voltage output on the uh, little wires. It was great. However, then a uh, follow-up question came along about what's called a split core current transformer. Uh, so named because the core opens up and you can put your wire through the middle and snap it down and the reason you would do that is what if you could not uh, cut your wire the way I had and you just needed to split your uh, hot and neutral lines apart and then you could slip this uh, core transformer around it and hook it right up. Works great. They're used in a lot of places. Let's see if it'll work for this. Taking a closer look, uh, this is the uh, device that I bought, and as you can see here on Amazon, it's um, oh fairly pricey at uh, twelve ninety nine, and uh, there are cheaper ones out there. Let's see which one did I buy? Here it is on eBay. You can find the same exact model, one hundred amp saturation, fifty milliamp output on this uh, little plug. If you uh, buy this one and it is all of three dollars and fifty five cents plus eighty eight cents shipping um, pretty good deal on that so if i was uh about to provide make a uh, ebay order and was willing to wait that'd be the way to go there are also uh, some other options in there uh, they come in different settings so you can get one that has a that is uh, 0 to 15 amp detection so its plug is going to provide a full output of its voltage and current at just 15 amps so you get much more sensitive versus the 100 amp that I have and so it would work a lot better probably if I, if I went with one of those. So let's uh, hook this thing up run a few tests and see if it'll do the job. So like last time we're going to uh, measure the power in a real simple way, uh, the, this is going to be plugged into the outlet, the mains, and on the back will be our uh, load, our sump pump, or in this case, a set of floodlights that provide a nice steady load. Now on this, as I explained before, the hot side of this is split right here, and it comes up this black wire. The white wire then goes out the back so that if this was, when this is closed, the current flows in and out to the device. Very handy to have for tests like this. So we're going to hook up our current transformer. We will also uh, monitor the output or the amount of current flowing through it using this uh, blue EEV blog uh, meter and it is set to amps RMS. So we're set to AC amps then we're going to monitor the output of this current transformer. Let's see, we're going to take this and put it into a little headphone jack here. And that is hooked up to our uh, to an rectifier right here. Let's take a closer look at this circuit for those who haven't seen the other version. If I can get that to zoom in reasonably well. So the output of our coil comes in here. There's a simple load resistor to uh, give us a voltage output. Then we go in and we see that it goes into a rectifier right down there. And what that's going to do is take our AC and smooth it into a DC voltage. And what we get is positive and negative output. Those then flow out to our LED and a dropper resistor. These wires right here are going to be used to monitor the coil voltage and then we'll also monitor the current flowing through the LED. Then we'll also take the output of this rectifier and the LED and run it over to our uh, microcontroller and get that to turn on uh, it's a little LED when it gets an appropriate signal level. 
All right, so we've got the coil output monitor, the LED current monitor, and our power. Now we're going to have live AC out on the bench when I plug that into the, to the socket. So I want to move that out of the way. Uh, you shouldn't be working with it this like this unless you really know what you're doing. You've got to be very careful. And when we turn on the load, we get a nice 3.6 amps of AC power flowing through that. We're showing a coil output of 2.5 volts under, now it's under load to the LED. And the LED is only getting, though, 0.42 micro, or 42 milliamps, so 4 and 20 microamps. Not really enough to turn it on. You can see a little bit of a glow. Uh, it is, however, activating the microcontroller, so that's really good. Um, let's take a look at the raw coil voltage coming out and see what that looks like. Maybe we can get some improvement. All right, we're set to monitor the voltage output of the coil directly with no load. Uh, we're set to AC coupling at two volts per division. That should provide plenty of room, I hope. And with the load turned on, we see about three volts RMS here, um, which is a uh, Pretty good, actually, and a, uh, oh, what's peak to peak on this? Looks like about 14 to 15, 14 volts anyway, probably peak to peak here, and a pretty jagged waveform, and so maybe we're not getting as much current as we should. Let's take a look at the rectified output, and maybe, uh, maybe that'll help. All right, so let's look at the output after it's gone through the rectifier we see about 500 600 millivolts AC RMS so about two volts peak to peak uh, right here oops don't want to touch that touch screen and it's uh, peak to peak at about two volts so quite a bit of noise that is probably gonna mess with the input pin on a microcontroller so we should probably smooth that out and the technique for that will typically be just to add a little bit of a uh, of capacitance there, so we'll just plug this in and see what happens. With the capacitor hooked up, let's turn on the load, and we see just a little spike at the beginning and a small 50 milliamp RMS, so no big deal. That is going to work just fine, I think. Um, let's switch back, and what we can see is that the little blue LED is glowing brightly. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. So now the, we can use a split core transformer and just not have to cut our wire, and that will work okay. It's working fine for this microcontroller. Another one might have a problem. Definitely have to filter the input voltage or the voltage coming out of the coil. Hey, it works. Again, these current transformers are very easy to use uh, with care, and they provide great isolation from the mains to uh, drive a sensor and you know, a, like a microcontroller or something else. This particular one doesn't really provide enough current to turn on an LED very well, but um, I could get a more sensitive one that at 15 amps would probably provide plenty of power to drive that light. That's it. If you have any questions, please post them.